Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video, and as you can see, we are joined by Titan today. He is currently on top ladder with 3.0 Expo Cycle. He's at 2,817 medals. Uh, it's technically called rating points, but I like to call it medals because I just think it looks like them, and also it sounds better in my opinion, but yeah, he's really high up on ladder right now. I think he's like top 200 or about to be top 200, and this is just honestly insane because these are the final few days of the season. There's only one day left, um, or so, a bit more in the season, and so far he's already looking like he got a huge connection just because uh, his opponent Paulo here went a bit too aggressive, so really nice early lock for Titan, and so it has been quite a while since I did a special guest feature here on the channel. I actually don't remember the last time I did one or who it was. It might have been Titan though, honestly, but he's just really been tearing it up with ladder. I would personally say that you could argue he is the best expo player in the entire world right now and I'm not even trying to exaggerate just with the state of the game and everything and how well he's been perfor performing with 3.0 expo cycle only in the last few metas like last meta he finished 34th I think with 3.0 with the monk the phoenix meta I mean it has not been uh, it wasn't as bad as it is right now you know the meta didn't develop as much but it was still monk and phoenix at the start right I guess just less people had it maxed but that was just so impressive honestly so right now he's still persevering and Part of the reason why I'm doing this is because I've honestly just kind of checked out of the season. Also, it looks like his opponent, Paulo, here lost already. Um, again, I think he just went aggressive in single, uh, Paulo, that is, and Titan just kind of punished. And so I personally like to play this way against minor wall breakers anyways because uh, it's a really bad matchup if you think about it. So you just really want to be aggressive in single and try and get a lock because once double hits, they can afford poisons. They can minor poison log your expos, always get damage. Um, and it's just frustrating, but with this early lead, I fully expect Titan to win. So, like I was saying, though, I'm kind of flip-flopping between points, but I just have honestly checked out of the season like a week ago. I stopped playing ranked. I made a video, you know, the di the final day, the last straw that I kind of gave up. And I know I, sometimes some people say I complain a fair amount, but it just is what it is. So the fa final straw for me was when I started playing ladder and then I played for like an hour. I got a hundred trophies or medals and it wasn't even fun whatsoever. Like I could not honestly say that I enjoyed the game at that time. So I just decided not to play anymore. And I've been having a lot more fun playing some other games. I've been playing Bug Fables on my Switch. You guys might have seen my YouTube videos. I know a lot less people watch them. But, uh, yeah, like, I've been enjoying other games. I have not been enjoying Clash Royale at all right now, at least in this meta. And I love this game, so it's kind of sad to say. But with that being said, I still wholeheartedly respect people like Titan, who are performing incredibly well in a tough meta like this. And so, obviously, I had to record his games and get them on uh, for you guys so you can learn because, you know, the best Super Expo Cycle players, if they're around, then Expo never truly dies. Like, Expo is definitely, I would say, a dead archetype right now. Like, 3.0, you, you can't really argue. Maybe, like, some Queen Bow decks or some Rocket versions, but 3.0 with Firewall Archers, like, it is so dead right now with the meta with Monk Phoenix everywhere. But anyways, Titan just absolutely destroyed in this first match here, so let's check where he's at and I'll continue this discussion in the next match. Alright guys, so Titan is ranked 290 right now, so he's doing absolutely insane, but yeah, like I was talking about, I just haven't really been enjoying the meta, and I know some people say I complain a fair amount, but if you are trying to have success with 3.0, it just honestly is quite frustrating, and that's kind of where my thoughts stem from, because I try and have success, but I understand that I could also adapt and, you know, play a different deck or even a different archetype, but I'd rather just play the deck that I enjoy the most, right? So it's just been kind of sad to see how Monk and Phoenix are kind of destroying the viability of many archetypes right now. But anyways, uh, back to the main topic here. The reason that I made this video is because I have not been playing, but I still wanted to show you guys some of the top ladder content with 3 Pinox with Cycle, and Titan is pretty much one of the only suppliers of said content. So he is 290 right now, global, which is honestly astounding to me, because I stopped at like 2100, 2200 rating. Um, he's currently 2800 plus, so I would not have the patience to play through Pano in this kind of meta. He has only been playing through Pano up to this point so far, I'm pretty sure, so it's just really incredible. I checked his Royal API, and he's playing this, like he's not playing Monk, Phoenix, anything. So, goes for an expo in the middle right here, and that is interesting because against 2.6, something I actually dislike quite a lot is the fact that they can fireball log your expos and the tower, but you'll notice that the opponent can't do that here because Titan went expo in the middle, so that's quite an innovation, I guess. have not really seen that, although obviously it doesn't really get much of a connection, if any at all, because uh, the opponent was easily able to defend it, because if you do get a hog, uh, or do get an expo down in the middle, they are just easily able to attack it, and is very vulnerable, you know, with a hog, with a cannon, with a musketeer on either side, it's too risky 
risky to just spam protect, especially in single. And right now, Argeti and his opponent here is just spamming cannons. And Titan actually fireballs tower, so that is a play that I will take note of. Um, because I know Titan likes to fireball cycle quite a lot with this deck. It's definitely what makes it a lot more viable than just x all the time. Uh, but yeah, what something I really dislike in this matchup is the fact they can just pre-cycle cannons and then stall out your expos. But Titan did just elect to fireball the tower when that happened. So he's not feeding the cannon any value. It's technically just a minus one trade and getting a free fireball on tower if you think about it. And just fireballs tower again, wow. So this is a completely new playstyle. I have not really seen against uh, Hog 2.6. But again, I've been watching Titan for many months now at this point. Like, he is definitely one of my favorite expo players of all time to watch and the opponent here gets a very aggressive fireball and I think Muskie might have gotten a hit on the tower there or if not the fireball definitely did and the hog did so that is an influx of damage for the opponent that is not going to be nice for Titan now he's forced to go for an expo which I completely understand because he needs the damage back um, has to let the expo die sadly because as you can see uh, the play for 2.6 in a situation like this they usually pressure opposite with a hog and then they can just get away with like a cannon on your expo or like ice golem kiting and stalling not kiting but like stalling and tanking um, I actually did the math which is kind of funny but I think an ice golem tanks for like 29% of an expo by itself uh, so that is honestly just a testament to how annoying it can be going against Ice Golem with this deck if they have a fast cycle and just stall you out forever. He is again just fireball cycling. I'm actually really impressed if he wins this one because this will be a completely new playstyle against 2.6 and I actually might try it myself sometime because uh, the opponent isn't fireballing back which is what I would probably do if I was him. Uh, with that being said, if he does fireball back instantly, Titan could just maybe go for an expo or something. Yeah, I give the wow, I am as surprised as Argetian here because, again, this is just a completely innovative and completely new way to play. And I know Titan has been fireball cycling for a long time. Really impressive Tesla as well there, by the way. It's such a small nuance, but because he played the Tesla one tile lower, the Musketeer wasn't able to snipe it. And I guess he knew that the opponent would predict the Tesla with the Musketeer high. Because uh, if you center place the Tesla three tiles down, they will be able to hit it with a muskie, but four tails down, I guess not. And that does mean the fireball, or the Tesla rather, is susceptible to a fireball and your tower if it's four tails down. But uh, at the same time, um, the opponent didn't have elixir because he predicted with the musketeer. So still trying to get an offensive expo initiative happening here. Does get back to a Tesla and he's actually up in damage right now. I don't believe he's gotten a single expo lock in this game. I might be wrong, but I think it's all been fireballs and he's actually winning this way. So this is definitely, again, a new way to play 2.6. I don't know if I'm as comfortable as him just fireball cycling a lot. As you can see, he's protecting his Tesla and he is ahead in damage. So 2.6 has a faster cycle, but I think Titan's going to get the win here just because he's up by like 50 damage. I don't even know how that happened, but it did happen, right? Maybe he got a small lock at some point, or like an Ice Spirit, I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but he does come out on top. I don't think the opponent's back to a fireball in time. He's laughing, he's upset, but really nice win. Shows you Titan's playstyle against 2.6. Again, I've said this many times, but just very creative, very innovative, and a new way to win, and he did win, even if it was just by a hair. So really, really impressive win by Titan there. Alright guys, so getting at the next match against Aham, and Titan is now top 250 in the world with 3.0. Really nice stuff. We have not seen a Monk or Phoenix matchup. Now we see the Phoenix, so this is why I wanted to get him on, because these are the kinds of decks that are dominating the meta right now. Monk and Phoenix are everywhere, both of them. And so, yeah, Monk right here, perfect. So, I mean, not perfect. I feel bad for Titan. I would not wish this on any Expo player to go against these kind of cards all the time, but uh, I really want to see how he has been beating these, because obviously... If you are going to get high in a meta like this, you are going to have to beat decks like these with Monk and Phoenix, because they are literally everywhere. And again, like I, that's just kind of what made me give up, so it's very impressive. But yeah, I hope you guys like this content. I mean, it does take a fair amount of effort to uh, get the right time when people are playing and also like add my own input every and everything. Obviously, it's definitely my... Uh, enjoyment and passion like I do love watching uh, really talented gameplay and that's why I make videos like these I, I think Titan's gonna expo right here because he's up so much elixir uh, yeah expo at six is definitely the play and I think he just won so he is again pretty much a pro player uh, I don't think I, I think he even has the pro label on Royal API I think he's actually won money in many events so he is an amazing player at this game so his game sense is just immaculate and so he knows that his uh, opponent was too low he goes for a knight which is really nice because this is going to pressure and the skeletons too and ahem here i believe is not back to a bandit so that is going to get on tower skeleton is going to get on tower and these kinds of plays are only plays that you can make if you're smart if you know exact elixir counting and if you are just that good at game sense and 
just because Titan is that kind of player, he's that talented, those kinds of mechanics and principles are al allowing him to have the success with Expo uh, rather than just strength, strength of Expo itself. And it's really impressive again. So sadly he did miss that bandit with the fireball. It was like mid-dash, so it was invincible. Kind of annoying, but uh, it's whatever. I'm sure he's uh, going to be able to win this anyways. Just took a bit of damage there. But yeah, I'm actually curious to see how this game would have unfolded if that single elixir punish did not happen. Because again, uh, that pretty much won Titan the game. Really aggressive fireball and big push out of the opponent here. As you can see, Monk being very annoying. And really nice King Tower activation by Titan. Look at that. That is something you want to do against the Monk where you can basically just activate King off of the log. I actually have a short that I recorded of doing it, but I forgot to post it. Uh, but if you guys have been watching like top ladder players play for a while now on YouTube, you probably know about the interaction. Uh, so it's very important, especially against graveyard mashups with Monk, because that is like one way that you can almost guarantee you win, even if they have Monk for your Expos, because they can never get damage if you activate King against graveyard. But yeah, anyway, we're kind of just stalling at this point. Um, Titan just has to defend and cycle two Firewalls. And he actually does just Firewall right now. For me, I don't think I would do that. I think I would be a bit more patient, because I know he was down Elixir when he did that. And I would just like to get a very safe position to cycle two Firewalls. But Titan does not care. He's just going to Fireball cycle anyways, and he's already back to one now. So second Fireball going to come down, and that's going to be a perfect win against Ramrider Bridgeman with Monk and Phoenix. Well played out of the opponent. Definitely very well played. Alright guys, so Titan's at 2869 uh, medals right now, really, really nice, getting close to the top 200 actually, and Miner, so I recognize his opponent right here, he is a Miner Wallbreakers Magic Archer player if I'm not mistaken, and I think he also plays arrows in his deck, so Inferno Tower prediction, or I don't know what that was, whether it was a prediction or it was just uh, to prevent Titan from getting uh, Expo with the Knight, and he didn't even care if it didn't like hit an Expo prediction, he just wanted to get the Inferno down. I don't know, but as you can see, it did not pay dividends for him at all because that was kind of an outlandish, crazy play. Like, that was just really out there, and I would not personally prediction Inferno in, like, the first 30 seconds. But then again, it's top ladder, so these top ladder players know exactly what they're doing, um, and they do make crazy predictions like these because they played the matchup so many times. But just because of that prediction alone, I think his opponent here is already in a world of trouble and probably already lost, and uh, this guy does not have Monk or Phoenix again. Um, so I hope we can get more Monk and Phoenix matches again. I do not want Titan to struggle against those hard counters because they are very hard uh, and just very tough for Expo to break through, uh, impossible even a lot of the time. But uh, I do want to see how he's outmaneuvering, outplaying those uh, decks and what his strategy is. Goes for an Expo here. I believe Valk is out of cycle, so pretty nice timing here. And Wallbreakers come down. Uh, Titan got a cycle card down, but it got logged off. But Log is still on time there, and that's pretty much going to be tower down. So I believe the opponent's going to give up here. Probably throw in the towel, because, I mean, he's not going to break through. His last card might be a Tornado, because he has Magic Archer. Probably not a big spell based on how he's been playing, but... Looks like Titan is just going to get the 3 crown. Let's see if the opponent gives up. If he does, then I'm probably just going to cut the rest of the match because you guys know what's going to happen. But again, very impressive stuff out of Titan just winning at the start. Although the opponent just pretty much made a big blunder with that Inferno Tower prediction. Or whatever that Inferno Tower was. Not even sure. Yeah, he's going to win, so let's skip this one. Alright guys, so Titan is now ranked 209 in the world. He did lose uh, one match, unfortunately, but we are into the next one against Over. And Over is someone called Kazutora. Or he, I think he's in a clan called Over or a team or something, but I've actually looked up him for a while. He used to be a really good uh, Ice Bow player, and Ice Bow obviously fell off hard in the meta, so he's been playing E-Giant as of late. So Bomber, Skelly's Phoenix, I would not be surprised this is E-Giant as well. I think his name is Kazutora. Um, an Earthquake, oh my gosh, it's going to be E-Giant Earthquake. Look at this play out of Titan. Center Expo, because the E-Giant will take extra duration to walk up there. And he does have to get a log down on this Bomber plus Egg, but he doesn't have enough Elixir, unfortunately. Don't even know if he had it in Cycle. So if he had a log on that, it would have been huge, but because he didn't really afford it, um, he was in trouble. And sadly, he doesn't get the Night Block on the Phoenix, or maybe he didn't intend to do that. Maybe he just wanted to kite the Phoenix back and get some Night Chip, and he does force some Skeletons out, so... Uh, yeah, but this is looking like a very, very hard matchup, and that is a very, again, impressive thing out of Titan. You know, he just knows what to do in every situation, so uh, he's just very confident in his plays. And so if they do go for an Earthquake and it's E-Giant, he just goes Expo in the middle, and he's going for it again. And Kazutora goes for a pump in the middle, up high. You never see that, but it actually makes sense in the situation. And Expo at the same time is really nice for Titan. 
Um, he does get a Phoenix down, so this is again what I was talking about in the same uh, match as the Hog matchup, and he is going to have to respond to this egg. Skellies will three-shot it, I believe, or two. Either way, thankfully, took it out on time. Although we could have also let it respawn and then gone Skeletons, but it just wouldn't have been as optimal, so why bother? But yeah, he just knows what to do, uh, but again, the center expo does not work out as well because if they have something like a phoenix or something that can snipe especially like mega minion in my experience uh it's just kind of tough to defend the expo he's still going for it though as kazutora is mirror earthquake cycling and again he's using this tesla placement so very creative expo tesla placement to cut the e-giant far away from the expo and keep the expo alive but again the expo is still very susceptible to getting sniped at the bridge here so i really don't know how titan's going to win this one you just go for an expo i believe his opponent's not back to an e-giant but yeah look at this mirrored earthquakes shred the expo it gets like 100 damage max and the opponent gets what like 400 or something because that's a level 14 earthquake and level 15 earthquake stacked together so fireball log out of titan though which means he will not have a fireball for the pump but he is sniping it with the archers and uh, i guess he knew the opponent didn't have enough elixir for an e-giant for those archers but the pump is still alive and well. He's still going for the expos though. He's constantly going in even though he's down. And again, Kazutora is going to get the mirrored quakes in. Which is just really painful to watch. Like, this is what the meta has become. This is what Clash Royale has come to. Where people are playing E-Giant, Mirror, Pump, Earthquake, Cycle. And just mirroring earthquakes to hard counter expos. It is kind of sad. And this is a another reason why I do not have the patience to play in this meta. So, massive props to anyone who is. But... Yeah, he's still Fireball Cycling and still in the lead because Earthquake does do less damage than a Fireball. However, I just fear for Triple Elixir because Titan is definitely going to get outpaced in Triple when Kazutora can cycle like 4 Earthquakes in 20 seconds or something. It's definitely going to outdamage uh, Fireballs. And notice how he can Earthquake the Tesla because he does have E-Giant. He's getting back to a third E-Giant on the left or the right. On the right there. So multiple E-Giants. Titan is about to hold off against three E-Giants. Can he do it? Uh, high Tesla, anti-Earthquake Tesla. Knight up high, Ice Spirit to freeze, and he's cycling back to a Tesla. He does get back to one, but Earthquake takes it out. But I think he's actually... Oh my god, he actually did defend that. He took some E-Giant ship on the right, but somehow, some way, Titan is alive. So he is holding the fort down against E-Giant, Mirror E-Giant, Phoenix Spam, with Earthquakes against his defensive building. So it's just nuts, honestly, what he's doing right now. I really hope he wins this, because this is 100-0. Like, this is almost looking like a snipe. It's just that the meta is so sad that this is actually what the meta has become. It's not even a snipe. But, uh, yeah, like, he's still winning, but... Again, Kazutora is stacking mirrored earthquakes. He does go for an expo opposite, predicting an E-Giant prediction on his expo on the right, I guess. And he does go for an earthquake in the middle, predicting the expo Tesla. And he does actually get the uh, defense off, because he doesn't get an E-Giant splash there. So I, he actually could be in this, but again, now the new E-Giant, or the new earthquake spam is going to come in. Fireball on tower. Phoenix didn't respawn. He could actually win this, but mirrored earthquakes coming down. He's definitely going to get back to a new... He has a native as well, so really, that's the first native of the game. I think that's going to win him the game, though, if he defends this, because Titan cannot updamage these next mirrored quakes and a nato again. So, Titan, yeah, he's down, and a nato comes down, too. That is actually so sad. I'm going to include this in a video, just because this is how bad the meta has been, but look at how well Titan held his own against a matchup like this. Just incredible. And again, just really nice innovation with the expos in the middle, Tesla on the side. So yeah, sadly Titan is down to top 250 again, but this is still one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in this meta right now, because of all the decks he's going against. Right now he's up against Crazy Hulk, and I actually recognize Crazy Hulk, I think he plays his own E-Drag Hog Earthquake deck, I beat him when he was playing that in a GC before with 3.0, but it looks like he's not playing that right now. Everyone and their mom is playing this new uh, Phoenix meta, where they're playing Monk Phoenix every single game. So, this is going to be Mortar, and wow, Knight does not take the brunt of that Mortar shot, which means uh, he's going to have to Ice Spirit to retarget. Thankfully, though, Crazy Hulk does not get the Monk to block the Ice Spirit. It does hit the Mortar, too. Otherwise, Titan might have already lost, but he is alive right now. Archer sniped the Miner first before the Monk. Very important detail there. We might see King activation off this Monk. Nope, we see an Expo because Monk is basically dead, and he doesn't have a back-end cycle. So, wow, Titan is actually going to get a pretty big lock here. He does go with a very high Knight. Not even waiting for the optimal timing on the Phoenix, because it's very hard timing to get. He does get a huge lock there, so 
really smart stuff. So the one thing I've noticed about people outplaying Monk in these situations, especially Titan, because uh, I've watched him play and beat Minor Poison uh, with Monk, like a by definition hard counter. And what he basically does is he waits for the Monk to be on the board and keeps it alive as long as possible so that the Monk will be out of Crazy Hulk's rotation as long as possible too. That way he can actually go in and the opponent won't have a Monk in cycle to fully counter the expo. Because you know Monk single-handedly deflects over half of an expo's HP um, with pretty much remaining at full HP as well. Fireball cycle out of Titan here, so again, you know what I said, he loves his fireball cycle and he is going to maintain this lead, but I still feel kind of worried for him, even though he has such a nice lead, because this is quite a difficult matchup. Like, this is, again, another one that I would call probably 100-0. People might say I'm over-exaggerating here, but all Crazy Hulk has to do is go with defensive motors the whole game, go Monk on the Expo, Minor Poison whenever, and go same lane as Titan. But because he was pretty aggressive in single, and Titan instantly recognized that and punished him, he had the perfect sequence of plays there. He actually almost gets a lock again, but does force the Monk out, and this is actually good for Titan, I would say, because even though Hulk isn't going to use the ability on the Monk, Titan is going to be able to outcycle this Monk once again and go for an Expo. So notice how he's not just turtling and playing defensively. He's still going in with Expos, even though he kind of knows they won't really break through. Wow, prediction log on the Goblins. If he got that off, that would have been insane. He actually did get t two of them, but uh, he does not take all of them out. And the Egg does tank for the Expo for a bit, but he still gets a lock, even though Hulk gets his own uh, Mortar connection as well. But Titan is, again, just maintaining this lead. And very impressive stuff. He's up pretty much 1,000 HP. Although right now this looks like a tough situation. Expo comes down. Monk, as you can see, is just going to deflect the Expo. Very sad. Very oppressive. And Miner comes down to snipe down the Expo. Missed Skeleton's Kite, but if he got it, uh, or Miss Skeleton's Distraction, if he got it, might have had something there. But uh, yeah, Miner is, again, just such a versatile card. Such an easy counter to Expo. So... Uh, you can minor anywhere on the expo in a pinch, and that's what he did. Wow, prediction Tesla out of Titan, I believe. Uh, and he does catch the mortar, so very nice stuff there. Otherwise, might have been trouble with this monk in front. It's still going to be a lot of damage, though. And so Titan, I think, is going to go for the same thing. Maybe archers on the monk, on the miner, rather. Nope. Logs. And log is deflected back because monk is pretty broken, as you can see. And all the damage is pouring in for Hulk right now, so... This is looking not that good anymore because, as you can see, he's just getting a ton of damage, like, just cascading in because of the fact that Monk is overpowered and is deflecting the tower back at itself, is deflecting his logs back at himself. But that is one fireball, one log left, so I believe Titan can hold unless Hulk predicts his fireball, and he does with a Monk, but messes it up. So Titan is also predicting the miners, has to catch them. He does actually catch it. Fireball comes down, and now he just has to log. Wow, Hulk does predict the log, though, and that is going to deflect it, so he needs another fireball. This is coming insanely down to the wire. Fireball comes down, and oh my god, one more poison tick would have done it, and Titan would have lost. But he gets the fireball down in the nick of time. That is so deserved, like, such a deserved win. Oh my god. Alright guys, so I'm absolutely blown away by that win by Titan there um, against Mortar Monk. As you can see, even though he had a huge lead in single, that is such a bad matchup that his opponent pretty much caught up in his entirety of tower damage, uh, but Titan was able to clutch it out. Again, we're against Lord Avenger SG here. I've actually played against this guy in a GC as well. He was playing Mortar, Minor, Monk, and I beat him. Uh, so he might be playing the same deck, but he actually does have a Mortar here, so he probably has the same deck. No, he has a Skelly King. Okay. As, I'm actually glad it's not the same deck as what Titan went against just now, because Monk is definitely way more difficult to deal with than the Skelly King, in my opinion. Um, I've actually heard some people say that maybe Monk is more manageable in some matchups, like Graveyard, because you can outcycle it pretty easily. Um, but I don't know how to feel about it, because, I mean, again, Monk is just pretty much a walking shutdown expo button. Uh, does get an expo connection here, because Skelly King is out of cycle. So, log on the Barbarrel as well, trying to catch the opponent off guard, maybe. and Or just... Uh, getting a bigger connection, extending his lead, and he does so, and he is up by 800 damage now to start things out. Lord Avenger is mad, he's already giving the global tourney emote and angry faces. Titan gives the global tourney emote back, and so, yeah, um, he gives a good game. I guess he thought he already lost. I don't think, so Lord Avenger obviously can't have a monk in here, which is great, because you just saw in the last few games how bad monk is for expo, but uh, still, he does have the mortar and the barbarrel poison. So, Mortar Graveyard has actually been making a resurgence recently, and it's funny because both these cards are insanely broken, and Mortar Graveyard, uh, both of the archetypes, have been some of the best decks in the entire meta for a long time. Zappies come down for Lord Avenger, so uh, log on the Zappies, Tesla is still doing work on the Phoenix, 
And notice how Titan still shoved his Expo there, even though it's kind of an awkward placement, just to get it kind of next to the Tesla there. Um, so no connection there. Zappies are a great counter to Expo. You can't do anything against them unless you fireball them. You can log skeletons, but that's still a 9 elixir trade against 4 elixir zappies, and they still get some chip. So it's not easy. But uh, Tesla comes down for this mortar, is going to defend. Looks like Titan pre-cycled archers, actually does bait out the poison, and then he can go for an Expo, and no poison is in cycle. So Lord Avenger actually doesn't have amazing Expo counters in this deck. He does have the mortar, which again, he can spam on defense. And he also does have uh, Barbarrel Poison. But Titan is just taking full advantage, trying to bait out the poisons. Wow. Law comes down on the left. Uh, Zappy is forced out. Titan is going to let the Expo die on the left, but is going to commit to this right Expo now. So this is another huge thing, by the way, that I also talk about a lot in my own videos and my own games against Graveyard and decks like these with Poison. You always want to be going opposite lane to your opponent um, when they have Poison and Cycle pretty much all the time, as you can see Titan's doing right now. Because you don't want to give them poison value on your expo plus your weaker side tower. In this case, Titan's right side tower. So even though Titan is technically going for the right side, he's only going to go in with expos there once Lord Avenger expends his poison, I would say. Otherwise, not really worth it. And Titan does actually catch the barb barrel and actually kind of equalizes damage in both lanes. Lord Avenger says thanks. He's obviously very frustrated right now. And Titan is very happy with his global tourney emote. Um... He's also saying, oops, uh, I guess, I don't know, like, I don't know, this is a fun emote war, I guess, but uh, Titan is not afraid to dish it back out if people are going to BM him. But it, I think he has this in the bag. I mean, he does have archers for the uh, graveyard. Lord Avenger does not have snowball or arrows for the archers, so he has to poison. And as you can see, perfectly timed expo out of Titan does get the lock. So that's another good thing you want to do. You want to time your expos to go in when they go for a graveyard poison because they'll be so low in elixir they can't defend. And Titan predicts the zappies with fireball. Says thanks and that's going to be a good game. That's going to be the final game of the video, guys. Again, really impressive stuff to Titan. Let's see where he's at. Alright, so he's going to end at 2891 medals, top 250 in the world, top 200 in my heart, and honestly just, again, insanely impressive out of Titan to be doing this well in a meta this bad, so I have mad respect for him, gave him so much props, and again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video, please like and subscribe if you did, I don't really ask for that very often, that felt kind of unnatural, but... Uh, I have been trying my best to upload quality content, I've been doing that for years now at this point, um, and not a lot of people are doing all well the expo in this meta, so, you know, I'm trying my best to get you guys some content where you can still see the best players, in this case Titan, and uh, yeah, he's not uploading on his own channel, he does have a YouTube channel, but he doesn't really post on it that often. Uh, he did post his games from last season, which was incredible. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad I was able to get this for you guys. Hope you enjoyed as well. Just showcasing pretty much the only through Hunter Expo Cycle player still alive at this point and doing well. I think most other Expo players switched archetypes or switched decks, like they're playing Expo Queen with Rocket, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Massive shout out to Titan. Check out his social links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.